Welcome to this Indomitus Conversions video and today I'm going to convert the Necron Overlord 9th edition and it's coming right up. Necrons! Nick speaking and welcome to this video and if you're new to the channel and you want to learn about Necrons and more then please subscribe and hit the bell button to turn on all notifications so you don't miss an upload. Now if you were lucky enough to get one or two Indomitus box sets particularly for the Necron side of things and you're looking to convert the push fit miniatures which come in the set well this series of videos is going to be for you. Now today it's the Necron Overlord that I'm going to convert and I'm going to do this in a step by step way as I actually convert my miniature. Now I'm not going to do any kit bashing, I'm only going to use the sprues that are in the Indomitus set. And the reason for that is I feel there's a lot of people out there that have only just started with Necrons, this is their first venture into Necrons and especially if you have two sets where you don't want to build two miniatures exactly the same. So my aim is to show you how to build one of these miniatures make them look different but not use any extra parts. Now if you do own a lot of Necron bits then well of course you could look to kit bash this model add maybe a cloak from a Necron Overlord you could do quite a lot with it and you could be as creative as you want however my aim today is to have two Necron Overlords from two box sets and to make them look different without using extra bits so let's get straight to the conversion Okay, so here you go, we've got an Overlord built exactly like the instructions tell you to build him and, well, he does look incredibly cool. I absolutely love this miniature. However, if you have two of these miniatures, you don't want them looking the same, you want them to look different and being a push fit miniature, they can be quite difficult to do. However, it's not impossible. Now having built this miniature and glued him all together I'm going to have a closer look at him and see what I can do with it. Like I said I'm going to try and change this model without using extra bits, literally just taking what we've got making him look different. Now one thing which is quite interesting about this miniature and arguably makes the conversion work a little bit more difficult is the wires which are attached to both weapon options into the body. Now without those wires there this would be a lot easier to convert and it depends how fussy you are about having the wires because arguably you could just cut them off and it would make things a little bit simpler. However I think personally I'd like to keep the wires there because well this miniature is going to have the wires so it makes sense that the second miniature which is holding exactly the same weapons would also have the wires but if you're not that fussy, you could just cut them off and it would make the conversion a little bit simpler. Now taking a close look at this miniature, I think there's three things that we can do to make this miniature look a little bit different. And the first one is going to be with the waist. I'm figuring if we cut the waist in half and then actually physically was able to rotate it one way or the other, it really would change the dynamic of the pose. And then of course we've got the two arms which if we can get those into different positions that would also change the pose up quite a bit. So that's what I'm thinking. The head potentially we could angle that in a slightly different direction although with the waist angled in a different direction that might be enough. And of course he's standing on this rock here which again you could potentially cut that off. It depends how you feel about that. I'm going to do the bulk of the waist work first and then if I feel like it's a good idea to take the rock off to make the pose different then I might attempt to do that but little steps at a time and just see how it goes and I think the first one is going to be the waist and the reason for that is I have already clipped off all of the pieces these are the pieces that we have and not only have I clipped them off I've cleaned them all up so there's no mould lines now looking at this section here a bit closer we can see that we've got good access before we glue anything together to actually cut 
the waste section and my plan will be to drill a hole in the top and bottom and then put a little pin there so that I can pivot the body around. Now judging from this weapon here which also has the spine of his back attached to it, once that's pushed into place and you've got the arm uh, attached to this section here, there is actually some room to play with to effectively bend this into a different position and maybe glue it. But I'm also figuring that as we rotate the body, it's going to make these wires obviously change position as well. So I think I need to work on this body section first and then go from there. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is have a look at how I'm going to cut it. Now if I put this down on my cutting board and try to cut it straight down here, I'm going to be bending some of these quite fragile sections. This side here has got the little wire, it's going to make it quite difficult to sort of put it down. So what I'm going to do is use an old paint pot, I've got some blue tack there, and if I position the miniature like this with the blue tack, I've worked out that these two sections here are not vulnerable to breaking, so I should be able to put pressure on it with my knife just here to be able to cut it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hold it in a nice position. I'm going to take my time. I don't want to rush this. And I'm going to gently just push the knife through the joint. Just wiggle the knife, it will gradually go through the plastic. Don't push it too hard, it will go through. And there we go. A perfect cut. Right, so now I'm going to get my pin vise. This is basically just a little hand drill with a one millimeter bit on the end. Games Workshop uh, sell these, but you can get these from any little hobby store and we are going to drill a little hole in the center of this section here and then in the center of this section here allowing us to pin it with a little paper clip and that will make the join nice and strong plus we can rotate it before we glue it to work out the pose so all we're going to do is find the center of this section again take your time and be gentle once you've found the middle just gently rotate the pin vise and drill out a hole. Do that on both sides and then we will be back. Okay, so we've drilled the hole, so now we're going to get a paper clip. We're going to take a little bit of it off using our clippers, like so. You might have to chop this down a little bit more. We'll see how it goes. What we're going to do is we're going to Get a little bit of super glue in a second and we're going to super glue that into position and then on this half we're going to currently leave loose, there we go, perfect uh, height, we're going to leave that loose so we can get our actual pose up and running and then once the pose is ready we can then super glue the other half but for now we're just going to super glue this into the hole. Okay, so we're going to take our pin. We've got some super glue here. This is Gorilla Glue Gel, which I like to use. A little bit onto the pin. Then we're going to pop that into the hole there and push it down. And we're going to leave that now to dry. Okay, so whilst that is drying, we're going to go onto this weapon here. In particular, this section at the bottom where you have these rocks that the weapon is attached to, which in turn is attached to the base. We're going to remove these rocks because we're going to change the angle of the weapon. So we're going to do that again with our little hobby knife. We are going to gently just clip it off. Now to be fair, there's not much room for error here because it's only just attached to the rock. So it's quite an easy one just to go in and cut that off there. And then at the bottom of that rock, cut that off. We've removed the rocks. You can just go back in now and just sort of shape this section with your knife if you want to, just to tidy it up. 
but that's that section done as well. Okay, so I've just tidied the end up and I'm going back to this little rock section which attaches to the Overlord's foot just here. And I've decided what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this in half and the back section, which is like a boulder, I'm going to leave that off of this particular model, maybe use that on one of my other conversions, but I am going to use the front little stone because it finishes this stone that he's standing on off quite nicely. So I'm going to do that, then once that's done, I'm going to go back to this section and where the join is, where the arm goes into the arm joint on the body, it's actually got a little shaped piece, which is the perfect position for when the model is in its normal mode. However, it's not perfect for our reposed version. So I'm going to cut off the little shaped section just on the end here, and that will allow me to rotate this section in the arm slot just a little bit easier. Then, once I've done that, I'm going to start work on the other side of the model, which of course is where the other arm is, and I'm thinking I want to repose the other arm. Now, this section here is quite unusual. You've got the arm attached to the neck with the head on, and then you've also got a bit of the uh, chest plate on this section as well, and it goes into this section in a rather unusual way. It's like a Chinese puzzle how it goes in. So to repose the arm, I'm going to have to cut the head off. So I'll cut it where the little neck piece is. So I'll maintain the neck piece onto the head. And I'm also going to gently cut off the little chest section. So I'm gonna use a little sharp knife and just snip those sections off without obviously damaging any of the other area. And then I'll be ready to change the pose of the arm once I glue it into this piece. I'm also going to have to go into the leg section once again and on here we've got a little wire which also goes into the uh, arm. So I'm going to gently cut that section off from the leg as well and then we'll be ready to repose the second arm. Okay, so I've done all of that work. Now out of reference I'm using one of the pins on the miniature to pop this guy into the base just for this video. So once this video is finished, uh, before painting, I'm going to cut off that little pin. I'm going to fill the two holes with green stuff. And then I can glue him onto the base in whatever position I want. And like I said, I've cut the little stone off and I've glued that into position, just reshaped it slightly. So now I have this little spare piece which I'm going to use on another conversion. Okay, so then it was this section here. So I managed to cut off his head and also the little side chest plate and I've glued them into position. I've also glued the front section onto the back section, just pushed it into place and glued it. I know they're push fit, but I like to put a little bit of glue in there as well, just to make sure. So with that section built and the legs, I can now put the little pin into position and get an idea of how I want to pose him. Now, I'm thinking this way. Originally, I was thinking I was gonna have him facing this way, but I actually think the pose would be better this way. And I think having the pose to the left here is going to detract from this big staff which we're going to angle in a different position, it's gonna have more emphasis on the tachyon arrow, and I think that will just change the look of the model a little bit more. So he's gonna be glued into that position. I'm going to use super glue for that, rather than plastic glue, because of the little metal pin. And then once that's glued into position, I've got the little arm here, which I've took that little nodule off, like I said I was going to. I'll use plastic glue to glue the spine in, and then I'll use super glue to glue this arm into this socket. And the reason for that is I need it to be angled in a different position. It's gonna put a little bit of strain on the wire, and the super glue is just gonna be easier to hold it in position for it to glue. So. I'm going to do that for that side, and then it's just the other arm left to do, which I've currently got in three pieces. So this is the piece from the legs, which I cut off. 
which goes into the arm section. Now I'm going to re-angle this arm into sort of an upright position, which means that the wires potentially may not fit. I'm not quite sure at the moment, but I'm figuring if they don't fit, I could either just cut them off, or if I do really want the wires, I could just use some green stuff and make some little coils. However, I'm hoping they will fit, but I don't know yet until I've glued these pieces together. So that's what I'm going to do now, glue these together, I'm going to glue these pieces here together as well, and then we'll be back. Okay, so that's all done, so I glued the legs to the body, and then I glued the spine section in, Now, when it came to gluing this arm onto the arm that's attached to the body, well, it wasn't an amazing fit, so what I had to do is get a 2mm drill piece and just drill out a little hole into the arm section that's attached to the body, and that made the arm on the staff fit a lot easier. Then I just held it into position with some super glue. Now we have a very cool looking staff. I've also glued these three sections together on the arm, and in my new pose with this arm in the upright position, I'm able to get this main coiled uh, wire into the back section, no trouble. However, the wire underneath isn't able to attach, which, to be fair, I'm not too bothered about. I could green stuff a new wire on that one, but I think as long as I have one wire, I'm gonna be happy. So I'm going to remove this wire, and then on the body itself where the wire meets, there's like a little nodule on the body, so I'm just gonna shave that off. And then I'm going to glue the arm into position, and we're done. Okay, there he is, all finished, and I'm really happy how he looks. I think he looks a little bit more dynamic than the original model, although I do love the original model, the way he's just standing there on that rock. But my conversion, I think, he looks like he's in the thick of the action. And of course, just three simple steps, just the waist and the two arms to change the pose up. Now, to be fair, if I was building these miniatures and I didn't have a lot of overlords already, then I might actually consider changing this model a little bit more, mainly to get some different weapons on him. I would actually be very tempted to remove the wires which are attached to the arms and body, take them off completely, and then snip the arms off of the model and magnetise those arms back on and then magnetise some other weapon options like a war sigh or a resurrection orb and I'd actually make him a little bit more interchangeable than I have here. However, of course, I've got quite a few overlords already so I'm quite happy to have the Indomitus weapons on this guy and of course for this tutorial I wanted to keep it Indomitus based. Now when the next Indomitus conversion video is ready, I'll link you up to it on the screen now. If it's not ready yet, then I'll link you up to some other conversions which I've previously done, which you may enjoy watching next. Beam me up.